Well, many of our trees and shrubs are pruned during the dormant season, basically November through late February, early part of March, unless they're a spring flowering shrub, and then you wouldn't want to prune them because they're going to lose their flowers. However, most of the time you want to wait until the hard part of the winter is over, so a lot of our pruning chores will be left until late February or early March. However, you can do a little bit of pruning right now if you want to use some of those for your holiday decorations. This is especially true of the evergreens, the broadleaf, and also the needle-leafed evergreens. Now, you can do just a little bit of pruning. If you see some things that are sticking way out, maybe clip them off right now, and then use those to decorate for Christmas. The main thing to remember, though, is don't over prune them. And also, when you do take cuttings, make a proper pruning cut. Don't just come along and midway here, oh, this looks like a good piece. I'll clip that off and leave a stub here. Make a proper pruning cut if you're gathering some of your evergreens to use for decorations indoors. And while we don't want to shear them completely, we can take just a few things. Right here, this one's sticking out a little bit. With this inside to decorate with. Now also, you want to remember that you don't want to use your pines and your spruces because they don't have dormant buds. But some of your other evergreens, and especially your broadleaf evergreens, do have dormant buds. And also, many of your Arborvitas and also junipers, such as the eastern red cedar, have dormant buds, so you can prune a little bit on those and use them. You can also use, if you don't have a lot, maybe if you went and bought some garland at the store and you do want to have some of the pine, take a little bit of that and unwind it and use some of that to decorate with as well. Now there are several plants that we do have that we can use to decorate with, and I thought I'd show you today how to make a wreath out of some of those prunings. Now I've been collecting some holly, which is good, and also we've got eastern red cedar right here, and any of the junipers work really well. We've also got some of the Hollywood juniper. There were some wayward branches sticking out, and I've also got some fun broad leaves. Here the wax myrtle can be used, and it has a nice scent to it, and also in my wreath right here I've used some magnolias, and again don't shear the plant, but if there are some wayward branches that need to be pruned out, or little pieces sticking out, you can actually use those. And it kind of gives our wreath a southern look. Now I'll show you how it looks. We just put this together, and we've basically used eastern red cedar, we've also used wax myrtle, and we've used our magnolia branches and it makes a very nice looking wreath, kind of has a bronzy tinge to it and this would be a wonderful addition for Christmas. Now how do you do this? It's really very easy and the supplies that we need are right here. I'm going to lay this down. To start with, you basically need a wreath frame and these are very easy to come by. You can get them at a hobby or craft store and just remember that the larger the frame, the more plant material you're going to need to use. So if you don't have a whole lot of plant material, you might go with a smaller one. The one I used was a, about a two foot wreath frame here, and this is about an 18 inch. And I think that's what I'm going to show you, is the 18 inch one. Now again, if you don't have a lot of one particular type of plant material, you can mix your plant materials and that will help each one of them go further without totally chopping down something in your yard. Now you can go out and gather your plant materials ahead of time. In fact, it's really great if you can go out the day before or the evening before and gather them and then let them soak in a bucket of water overnight. It's pretty much like when you make garland or anything else. If they can take up some more water overnight, they'll stay fresher for you longer. And then you can just come and really you need about oh, one to one and a half foot pieces, maybe just a little bit uh, shorter than that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use some of our wax myrtle again and some of our eastern red cedar. And we've got our wreath frame. The other thing that we need is something to attach our plant material to the frame. Now, in the past, I've used florist wire before to make wreaths, and I've heard that you can use dental floss, but this works really well. This is wax linen, and I, my sister was using this to make wreaths, and it works great. It's a little bit larger than, say, dental floss. It's very sturdy, easy to work with, 
And with the wax, it actually grips the plant material so you don't have to keep pulling it tight all the time, which is what you have to do with the wire because it's so slippery. Now, to start, you just basically need to tie it onto the wreath frame like this. And the nice thing about having the, the string in a roll like this is it will be easy to go around the plant material. Okay, we've got that started. And usually I like to put my gloves back on to work with material, especially when some of it can have stickers on it. And we just make little bundles, probably, oh, say, a couple of our cedars and maybe one or two of the wax myrtle and cut some of the stems off and maybe a couple of the lower limbs here. And all you need to do is just place this on your frame just on the top and you can kind of tilt it so it runs with the frame and then just come around there about three times. And I've actually found that one of the best ways to do this is just sitting on the floor with all of this in your lap. It's pretty easy to keep track of it all. Okay, now you can wrap that about three times and then just lay it down because that wax string will grip and we can use some more of our plant materials. And we might use some of our other juniper. We have two different types here. And again, cut the lengths and lay it over. And you'll want to overlap it about halfway. And it just depends. And don't worry if you've got little pieces of wreath ring showing. You can either use a larger bundle or what you can do is come back after you've finished and put a little bit more greenery back in there. You can stick it in underneath the string. And that's basically all you do. Now you can again use one type of plant material or you can mix your plant materials. And when you're finished, you can go back in and add some color to it. Now here, you know, we usually think of hollies having the nice red berries for Christmas and the deciduous holly, which hasn't even lost its leaves yet. It's been so mild out here. But that would be very pretty in there. And all you would do is just kind of stick that down in underneath the string. You can just work with it and stick it in there. And we might even clip the top off here, just depending on what you wanted. But if you don't have hollies, there are other things that have berries that look very pretty on there. Here we have rose hips. And while they're not really berries, rose hips would be very pretty in a wreath. You could gather a few of those and put them in, and it gives them a very natural look. Uh, something else that you might not think about, but they've been really pretty this year, crab apples are pretty. And that would be a nice addition to the wreath. You could just cut little bits off it. And also, some of our Nandina berries would be very pretty. So you can see we've got a wide selection of plant materials that have berries. And if you don't have pine cones, use some of those magnolia cones in there. Now remember when you're using fresh materials to decorate with, if you're going to bring these indoors, you need to protect surfaces like painted walls or any of your wood surfaces because again, this is a live plant material that could have moisture in it and also sap. So don't just put this on your mantle without protecting it if it's a wood surface. Now brick would be fine. The other thing you want to remember is they are live plant materials. Without a source of water, they're going to be drying out, kind of like your Christmas tree. Just remember to be careful with anything burning that you don't set your wreath on fire, especially as it gets closer to Christmas. Well, remember, as you can use a variety of plant materials from your yard, don't butcher a tree, and remember to make proper pruning cuts, but you can decorate a lot with things that you find in your own landscape. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.